Hi, welcome to my world of mess. Um, yesterday I posted a video of myself um, talking to myself, essentially. Um, basically what I was doing though was preparing myself, sort of like on Back to the Future, for, um, for my test. It works, okay? So I know it seemed crazy, but it works. So um, I found out that um, someone told me that it helped them too. So watching my video. And so, you know, I thought, what harm will it do? Um, this is my uh, advanced anatomy and physiology final for lab. And basically we walk in with a blank piece of paper and um, we do have a word bank for this so that'll make it a little bit easier but go identify the muscle and then we have to identify the origin and the insertion of the muscle. There's 25. I feel very confident because I've tested over these muscles before. Uh, I know where they're at so I am going to record myself going over the origins and insertions because that seems to be the most difficult part and then I will replay this for myself a hundred times tonight and like 20 times in the morning for coffee until um, I have it and I would like to ace this test so here we go the first one is the pectoralis major and the origin is the sternal end of the clavicle and the insertion is the intertubicular groove. The second one is the sternocleidomastoid, also known as the SCM. The origin is the manubrium of the sternum and medial portion of the clavicle and it inserts in the mastoid process. The next one, infraspinatus. The origin is the infraspinatus fossa and the insertion is the greater tubercle of the humerus. Frontalis. The origin is the galea opnerotica and the insertion is the skin of the eyebrows and nose. The occipitalis. The origin is the occipital and temporal bones and the insertion is the galea opnerotica. The masseter. The origin is the zygomatic arch in maxilla and it inserts into the angle and ramus of the mandible. Temporalis. Origin, temporal fossa. Insertion, coronoid process of the mandible. The teres minor, which is one of the sits muscles. It is, the origin is the lateral border of the scapula and it inserts into the greater tubercle of the humerus. Deltoid. The origin is the lateral third clavicle and apparently I did not write down the insertion which is the deltoid tuberosity. The tibialis anterior, also known as anterior tibialis, um, the origin is the lateral condyle of the tibia, the proximal portion of the tibia shaft, and the interosseous membrane. And the insertion for that is the anterior surface of the medial cuneiform and the first metatarsal. Gluteus maximus. I think we're all pretty familiar with that term. Your butt. Um, the origin is the dorsal ilium, sacrum, and coccyx, and it inserts into the gluteal tuberosity. We also have the gluteal medius, gluteus medius, and uh, the origin for that is the lateral surface of the ilium, and it inserts into the greater trochanter. Pectineus. The origin is the pubic body and it inserts into the linea aspera. Um, latissimus dorsi, which I did not put down, which is 
the big back muscles, but I've got to find the origins here and the insertions. And it is, the origin is the spin, uh, spinous processes of T7 through L5. T7's um, the seventh thoracic um, bone in our spine, and L5 is the lumbar and um, the thoracic are just um, above um, or superior to the lumbar bones. The lumbar bones are at the end of our back and the iliac crest. So origin, spinous processes of T7 through L5 and iliac crest. And the insertion is the intertubicular groove. For that one as well. Next on the list is the vastus medialis and the origin is the linea aspera and the insertion is the tibial tuberosity. We have the semimembranous origin is the ischial tuberosity and the insertion is the medial surface of the proximal tibia. Next we have the psoas major, which is a word that begins with a silent P. Um, origin is the transverse processes, bodies, and intervertebral discs. And the insertion for the psoas major is the lesser trochanter. Next we have the rhomboid, which is another one that I did not copy down here. And the rhomboid, as I had mentioned yesterday, is in our, in our back. It's a muscle that kind of runs across the upper back there in layman's terms. And um, the origin for that is the spinous processes of C7 through T5. And the insertion is the medial border of the scapula. Let's see. Next we have the iliocostalis and the iliocostalis for the origin, the uh, iliac crest, ribs 6 through 12 and ribs 3 through 6 and the insertion on that, uh, angles of ribs, transverse processes C4 through C6 and that is the insertion. Next we have the pectoralis minor and once again that is one that I have not looked up yet. Okay. And the minor is the origin is the anterior surface of ribs three through five. And the insertion is the coracoid process of the scapula. The spinalis, another one that I have not looked up. I have them all here on my charts. I just did not recopy them down, which is another way that I try to learn this stuff is to write it down over and over and over again just like I say it over and over and over again until it sticks. I think I said that yesterday. A little bit of deja vu here. Kind of scary. Just saying. Okay. The spinalis. The origin is the spines of the upper lumbar and lower thoracic and it inserts into the spines of the upper thoracic and upper cervical. All right. Brachioradialis. Once again, did not look up the brachioradialis. It's in the arm. If you hear radial, it means it's running down through the thumb. I don't know what I did with the brachioradialis. That was muscle one test, so it's probably hid here somewhere. Obviously I need to be a little more prepared before I record myself. Radialis, where have you went?
Hmm. There we are. The origin is the lateral surface of the distal end of the humerus and it inserts into the styloid process of the radius. So there we go. Next, serratus anterior. Once again, did not look up the serratus anterior. I know where it's at. I just don't know the origins and insertions at this time completely. So I would not want to tell you wrong if you're trying to learn this. All right, the origin is ribs one through nine and it inserts into the vertebral border of the scapula. Three more left, the rectus abdominis and the rectus abdominis is the origin is the pubic crest and pubic symphysis and the pubic symphysis is where um, your uh, is it the ilium they kind of the your pelvic bones kind of form together and there's like this little spot that kind of welds them together and that is your pubic symphysis and the rectus abdominis origin which is uh, a muscle of the abdomen begins there and inserts into the xiphoid process and cartilage of ribs five through seven now your xiphoid process is this like little thing that kind of hangs off your sternum so you can see that that is rather a large muscle okay and we have the piriformis the piriformis is origin is the anterolateral surface of the sacrum and it inserts into the greater trochanter and last but not least we have the sartorius and the sartorius hmm, may or may not be on here of course it's on here sartorius the origin is the anterior the anterior superior iliac spine the asis and it inserts into the medial surface of the proximal tibia and that concludes the lab exam. Now, as I mentioned, um, I just don't need to know um, the origins and insertion, but I also need to be able to identify the muscles. So I will be referring to my uh, trail guide workbook, and um, I am pretty confident that I'm completely aware of where the muscles belong, the occipitalis, the frontalis, I mean the muscle location because I've been tested over this before, I feel confident in that. So like I said, just want to look over the insertions and the origins and make sure that I have those down correctly, although I could probably figure them out. Um, I'm excited to be done. I have worked very hard this past year and I just cannot wait to get away this weekend and celebrate the end of AMP. You never have to have AMP again. This is it, the end.